Today I'm taking a break from doing maintenance on my 80 series Land Cruiser and I wanted to talk about six mistakes every new Land Cruiser owner makes when they buy their 80 series. Uh, these are mistakes that I've personally done myself and a lot of other Land Cruiser owners that I've spoken to have confessed that they also have done this. Um, and so my goal with this video is to help new Land Cruiser owners or future Land Cruiser owners uh, get ahead of those mistakes and so they're aware of them and hopefully save them uh, some time, some money, some headache and give them that knowledge that most of us uh, you know, Land Cruiser owners now have, uh, but it's taken us uh, a few months to gain the knowledge and, you know, several thousand dollars later. And really quick before we get started, if you're new to me or you're new to the channel, I make videos on my 1991 80 series Land Cruiser, the beautiful FJ80. And uh, I have a ton of videos on my channel for maintenance and other kinds of stuff. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested. If not, enjoy the video. With that being said, let's get started with the countdown, starting with number one. The number one mistake every 80 series Land Cruiser owner makes is they start buying upgrades and not addressing key issues that are wrong with their 80 series. Now, I am 100% guilty of this. As soon as I bought my 80 series Land Cruiser, I started looking for a roof rack, a front bumper, a rear tire carrier, <clears throat> getting a lift, getting bigger tires, LEDs. I went crazy. I was looking everywhere. I was uh, creating wish lists on Amazon and um, creating uh, bookmarks and things like that of all everything that I was going to buy. And all these things get super expensive, really, really expensive. Um, and so thankfully, I realized that my Land Cruiser had been like neglected for a couple of years. Um, when I started doing some of the baseline maintenance, I realized that it had been neglected. So I'm glad that I didn't start spending a ton of money on all these upgrades uh, because then I would have had this vehicle that would have looked really cool but I would not have any of the confidence to take it anywhere because I hadn't worked on it yet. So thankfully, I started working on my 80 series. I've gotten it pretty good, uh, a very good tune-up on it, and so I'm very confident with it now, uh, but that's one mistake. You don't wanna start buying upgrades, buying all these things without addressing key issues that are on your 80 series Land Cruiser. All right, moving right along to number two, and that is getting a lift kit without understanding what is all entailed in lifting a vehicle. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but I'll give you the gist. When you buy a true off-road vehicle, one, for example, that has a solid straight axle, like the 80 series Land Cruiser, you need to understand that you're messing with the geometry of the vehicle, the way that the Toyota engineers originally designed it and so when you lift it up higher and taller and you install larger springs larger shocks longer ones um, it's gonna affect the drivability of the vehicle so yeah you could just put in new springs and new shocks but you're gonna affect the way that the vehicle drives and the way that it handles so those are things that you need to keep in mind it's not just hey, I'm going to install a lift kit. There's other things that aren't involved when installing a lift on a vehicle like the 80 series Land Cruiser. So that's another mistake that I made personally, um, not on my 80 series, but on my Jeep TJ, that if I would have known before, I would have planned for it. So that's number two, buying a lift kit without understanding everything that actually needs to be done to the vehicle to make it roadworthy. All right, moving right along to number three, and that is neglecting baseline maintenance and preventative maintenance. This one is huge, honestly, because most of the vehicles that you're buying, most of the 80 series Land Cruisers uh, have 200,000 miles or 200,000 miles or more on them. Some of them have 360,000 miles, and they still run super strong and super, super well. 
Um, but if you want them to last even more, another 100,000, 200,000 miles, then you want to do this preventative maintenance to make sure that they get there. Unfortunately, a lot of new 80 series owners like myself don't understand the importance of getting your vehicle baselined and doing that preventative maintenance. Um, and it can get really expensive if you start, um, you know, going to a shop or going to a mechanic for them to do it. They'll be more than happy to take your money. But I strongly believe that any one of you guys that's watching this video can do it no problem. Um, all you have to do is move a wrench and that's all it really is. You don't need special tools, you don't need nothing. You could do all this stuff uh, with tools from like Harbor Freight. That's what I've been doing. Um, and it's really fulfilling because you take, you know, when you when you get a vehicle that's not super um, baselined and it needs some work and you put the work in, you're going to take a lot of pride in showing it off. And when you're on a trail or when you're off-roading or when you're on a road trip and let's say something goes wrong because, I mean, it's a 30-year-old vehicle, you'll be able to diagnose it and figure out what's wrong with it. And the more you know about your vehicle, the more confidence you're going to get uh, when driving around or taking it on trips. So that's the goal, right? Being able to be confident and knowing exactly what you have and trusting your Land Cruiser. So that was number three, neglecting baseline and preventative maintenance. All right, moving on to number four, and this is very similar. It goes right in line with number three, and that is thinking that some of the baseline maintenance is too difficult. A lot of new 80 series owners think that they're incapable of doing some of this maintenance, and I was one of them, but I can 100% tell you from experience, you're more than capable of doing it. You just have to put in the time. You just haven't been exposed to it. That's all it is. Uh, the difference between somebody that knows how to do something and someone that doesn't is exposure. So do your research, uh, watch videos online, uh, go on the mud forums, go on Facebook groups, take a picture of it and post it on a Facebook groups and say, hey, I'm having this issue. Can somebody help me? And, and then look for videos on YouTube. And that's basically what I did. And I've been able to do a ton of my maintenance because the 80 series community is so amazing. They're so helpful. Everyone is amazing. Everyone wants to give back. Everyone wants to just give. And that is the greatest part about it. So if you have an 80 series, congratulations, you're in one of the best communities there is for off-roading. So that's number four. That's the fourth mistake that most new 80 series owners make, uh, that they don't think that they're mechanically capable of doing a lot of the work. All right, moving on to number five, and this is something that I have done every time I get a new off-road vehicle, and every time I even think about getting a new off-road vehicle, and most people that buy four-wheel drive vehicles, this is the first thing they think of, and it's what's the biggest tire size I can fit on my 80 series Land Cruiser. And so before I even bought mine, I was like, all right, let's do this research. Turns out, you know, 80 series Land Cruisers can take up to 37s. The, the axles can take up to 37 inch tires. Now, if this were a Jeep, um, if it was a Jeep TJ, like my Jeep TJ that I have, uh, I could max go up to 33s and I'd be, uh, very, it'd be kind of sketch, right? Uh, if I were to take it off-road, because basically uh, on every turn, I'd be risking breaking an axle shaft. But with the Land Cruiser, uh, it doesn't even come close. Oh, my food is ready. <laughs> Give me a sec here. I'll be right back. So if the Land Cruiser, the 80 series Land Cruiser can take 37s, the question is, should you go up to 37s? And the answer is always yes, you should. But you need to be aware of some things. And this is where um, this tip number five comes in, right? A lot of people get bigger tires without knowing about gearing issues. They just say, okay, I could fit 35s on this. Let's do it. Let's go. Uh, but they don't realize that they might have to re-gear. <clears throat> their speedometer is going to be off. Their odometer is going to be off. All these things are, are pretty small. Um, but what you will lose is a loss of speed. Even though these are pretty slow, you're going to lose speed because your gear ratio is going to be off within your axles. And so um, even it might uh, reduce your uh, MPG, which I mean, these, if you're buying an 80 series Land Cruiser, you should not even think about MPG. Just look away when you're pumping gas, smile 
They say smiles per gallon. <laughs> That's all that matters. If you look outside and you see your Land Cruiser and it brings a smile, it gives you smiles per gallon. It doesn't matter how many miles per gallon you get. But that's basically what I'm trying to get at, right? You, you're you going to have other issues if you immediately just go to the largest tire size. And it might not even be the best tire size for you. So that was mistake number five, thinking that the biggest tire size uh, is going to be right for you without understanding the gearing issues. All right, moving on to number six, and that's thinking that your Land Cruiser isn't that good just because it's not triple locked or because you have an FJ80 and not an FZJ80. Let's be honest, if you have an 80 series Land Cruiser, dude, you made it. You have an 80 series Land Cruiser. They're iconic vehicles. I don't know what to say. Be happy that you have an 80 series. If you have the opportunity to buy a triple locked one, sure hop on that right away. If I had the opportunity to buy a triple locked 80 series Land Cruiser, I would hop on that right away as well. If it's a good deal. I'm, I mean, I'm not made of money. Um, but the Land Cruiser was known worldwide for its reliability, for its off-road capability. That's why it wasn't just popular in the US. Places like Africa, Australia, the Middle East, people all over the world know and recognize these vehicles because of the legacy that they have. So that was number six. Don't underestimate your vehicle just because it's uh, an FJ80 or an, it's not an FZJ80 or it's not the triple locked version or not the 40th edition. You have an 80 series. That's honestly all that matters. All right, guys. So that was the six mistakes every new 80 series owner makes. And just to kind of recap, here are the big takeaways. Don't neglect your baseline maintenance. Don't neglect the issues that come up um, and fix them. And if you do that, your vehicle will continue to last forever, another 100,000, 200,000, 400,000 miles. It's up to you. The other you know, big takeaway here is don't go starting and um, buying big lifts and big tires without really understanding what's involved, right? Re-gearing, installing uh, new pan hard bars, all that kind of stuff. You got to do your research because then you're going to have, you know, all these parts and then realize you have to dump another six, five to six hundred dollars into it. Um, and if that's not within your budget, then you've set unrealistic expectations and that's going to cause you to not really love your 80 series like you should. And the very last thing is if you have an 80 series, be happy it's an 80 series. It doesn't mo matter what model it is, if it's not diesel, blah, blah, blah. You have an 80 series. That's all that should matter to you. Congratulations. All right, guys, that was it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for everyone that's been leaving comments um, on the videos. I truly appreciate it. Uh, it helps me keep going and um, it lets me know that you guys are actually appreciate and enjoy the content. If there's anything else, any other types of videos that you'd like me to do, just mention them in the comments below. I'm going to continue to make more 80 series uh, Land Cruiser videos along with maintenance videos. I have some off-roading videos uh, coming soon. So just stay tuned for those. So here's the thing. If I keep getting more people to subscribe, then I'm forced to make more Land Cruiser videos, which then I'm forced to buy more upgrades for my Land Cruiser, which means that I'm going to get bigger tires and I'm going to get all these cool things, which, you know, obviously I don't want to do. So I don't know. It's up to you guys. Uh, let me know if I should or not. Um, have a good day. Hope this video was helpful. And, uh, Enjoy your Land Cruiser.